Good morning and welcome to this model integration with Revit Masterclass. My name is Nicholas Armit and I'm one of the trainers here at the MBS. Over the next 60 minutes, I'm going to take you through the Revit plugin uh, for Chorus. A little bit of housekeeping. The webinar will last 60 minutes today. Attendees' microphones are all muted. Uh, if you do have any questions, please put them into the question box and we will follow up with these after the webinar is finished. Today's agenda, we're going to have a look at where we can find the plugin, we'll have a look at linking the specification to the model with Uniclass 2015. We'll be dealing with the model and specification changes and how you can rectify those. And we'll be having a look at the differences when linking to a model using cores. So that's the differences between using cores and using Uniclass 2015. First of all, where to find the plugin? If you go to the MBS website and you click on platform at the top left hand corner, you'll see that you get an option here for other tools and at the bottom are a link to plugins. And this is where you'll find the download for the plugin for Autodesk Revit. You can download it from this page. You can also alternatively download it from the Autodesk apps website directly. There are plugins available for Gravisoft and Archicad, as well as Vectorworks, and the links are here to take you to those as well, so that you can download those. Today, though, we're going to be covering uh, the Revit plugin. Okay, so here we are in, in, in Revit. You can see that we have got a basic model here. This is a, a boot room for an extension to a, a country house hotel. And you're probably wondering, how do we know whether the Revit plugin is actually being installed? Well, first of all, if you look up at the top here in the toolbar, it says MBS between add-ins and modify. If I click on the MBS, it brings up the MBS tool options. And first of all, in the list, we've got to download BIM objects. So this enables you to download BIM objects from the National BIM Library. This is soon to be replaced by MBS source. Um, you can download both manufacturer objects and MBS generic objects. To the right of that, we've got update objects. So this enables you to apply any updates that a manufacturer might make to an object or MBS makes to any objects. We've got the option to add properties. And the add properties enables you to add MBS general and Kobe property sets uh, as a project parameters associated with Revit categories. Next, we've got activate, and I click on activate. This now enables me to choose which version of the plugin I want to use. So one of the benefits with the Chorus, uh, the Chorus plugin, Revit plugin, it has the create plugin, building plugin, and landscape plugin alongside it. Because we're looking at Chorus today, we'll just click on the Chorus version, and as soon as I do, you'll see on the right-hand side that the MBS Chorus panel has opened and it's asking me to sign in. You'll also notice we've got this new option that's appeared on the screen called Show. When I click on that, it will hide the panel and then it will re-display the panel again. Finally, I've got a support option here. And this support option gives me the option to sign into the plugin. You'll need to sign into the plugin to use the National BIM Library. But it's got information about the plugin itself so you can see what version of the plugin you're using and you can also see that the contact information for our support team are there as well. <clears throat> if I come across to the panel I can expand and decrease the size of that panel so I can make it larger, I can make it smaller. If I wanted to and I had a second screen I can drag that panel out onto the second screen and fully expand it. Now first things first, I need to sign in to MBS Chorus, so I'm just quickly going to sign in, just put my login details in. Click sign in. 
And as soon as I've signed into MBS Chorus uh, plugin, I can see all my projects that I've already got. And effectively what I'm seeing here is what you would see within a normal browser. Now one thing to remember is that whenever you sign into Chorus within Revit, you need to make sure that you are not signed into Chorus in a normal web browser. If you are, you'll find that you use two licenses. So always remember to sign out of Chorus from a browser before you sign into Chorus within Revit. Now you can see here I've got several projects already on display and one of them is my Gainsborough House project. So I'm going to look to uh, link this model to a specification within my Gainsborough House project. If I open up you can see actually I've got two specifications in there. I've got one for Uniclass 2015 and I've got one for Common Arrangements and Work sections. The reason I've got two is I'm going to have a look through the plugin using Uniclass 2015 and then I'm going to show you the differences that you have when you use common arrangements or work sections as your classification instead. So if I want to link this specification to this model it's quite simple. I just hover over Boot Room Uniclass 2015 and go to the right and click on the three dots. And click on those three dots and I just click on Associate with Model. The associate with model option does not appear in normal web browser, it will only appear within the Revit plugin. And as soon as I click associate with model, it asks me to confirm that I want to associate this specification to this model. So in this case, I'm going to go associate now. I get a little message at the bottom telling me that spec's been associated. And there's a little box with a blue tick next to it that tells me that this has been this uh, spec has been linked to the model as well. And the way I can tell whether the specification has been linked into the model other than that little box is that if I click into my specification and I go into add content, I find at the top of my screen here I've got an option for model. And that enables me to coordinate the model with the spec. That doesn't appear in the menu items when you're within Chorus itself in a normal browser. So I'm going to click on model and this brings up a report of all the families within the model. So when the syncing happened between the model and the spec, the Revit plugin interrogated the model for all its objects. And first of all at the top here we've got doors, so if I click on doors you can see the family of doors and we can see that we've got two different types. I've got doors external double flush and doors internal single. Now, I can link these um, doors to the actual to actual clauses within my specification. But before I do that, I just want to show you one thing. First of all, the naming here is exactly the same as what's in the model, and that is because that is information that was taken from the model itself. If I want to link these doors to a clause within the specification, it's just a matter of me clicking on these two arrows on the right and it will sync to the model and take me directly to the object. Now before I actually link this object to a system or a clause within my specification, I'm just going to go into edit type just to show you that currently within there there is no information from the Uniclass 2015 specification. There's nothing linked to it. It is just the property information in there from this being a Revit object. I'm going to go cancel. I'm now going to go into my contents of my spec and I'm going to link this door to a door set system. Now I could either scroll down the menu here or I've got a little search bar at the top where I can just start to type in door and it will filter down. So I've got two door set systems here. I'm going to select first of all this door set system at the bottom. Now click on the three dots and again it gives me an option to associate with model. Again this option only appears within the Revit plugin. I'm going to click on associate with model. It asks me to confirm I want to associate this door set system with the object in the actual model. I can now go associate and the associations occurred. It's given me a little message at the bottom. 
I've now got a little blue box on the door set system with a tick that tells me that that has been associated to the objects in the model. Now that's all well and good, the specs telling me that. But how do I know that that object when I look at it in Revit has been associated with that system? Well, if I go back and look at the property values in the edit type, and scroll down, you can now see it's brought in a new general section. And there's three things at the bottom of that general section which are the key to the linking of an object to a clause to a system. And that is these three unique identifiers. There's one for the project ID, there's one for the specification ID, and there is one for the clause ID. That means that anybody looking at this model and opening this specification in the plugin side by side that is how the plugin knows that the spec and the model and the objects in it are all linked together. Okay. I'm just going to go OK here. Now, when it comes to linking, some of you might be asking, is it possible to link an object to uh, multiple clauses? Well, you can only link an object to one clause. And that is because if I tried to link this object to another clause, it would overwrite these GUIDs. It would put a new GUID in for the clause ID because I've linked it to a different clause. What you can do though is you can link a clause from Chorus into multiple objects. So I could link the door set system I've got already, that I've already linked to this door set system in my model, to this door on the bottom of the model here. Now I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to link that door to my other door set system that I've got in the spec. And we can do that in a slightly different way. We don't have to go through the model report. If I want to, I can just click on the door. Now that that door is selected, I can then click on the three decks next to the door set system type A, click and associate that with the model. Again, it confirms it's associated for me. And if I go and have a look at the properties within that door, there you are again, there's the unique identifiers at the bottom. The difference this time, alongside the Uniclass 2015 code and title that have been brought in, because this object had a suffix, it's brought the suffix in. And if we had a prefix as well, it would bring that into the object. Now the nice thing with this is, if I go back to my model report, you can see that in the unassociated section, there is no doors anymore. And that's because if I click on the associated, it shows them there. And there's both the doors showing that they've been associated. So effectively, I can use this model report as a checklist to make sure that I've associated all the objects in my model to systems and clauses within the specification. So suddenly it becomes a lot easier to know what you've linked and what you haven't linked. So I can then continue working down my, this, the, uh, the report. I can go into furniture here and I've got several items here. Now, the items of furniture I've got here are all uh, MBS National BIM Library objects from, manu uh, from manufacturers. So I've got some seats here, some double-sided seats. I've got a locker here. And if I can click on, for example, the sink to this double-sided seats, you'll see that it's selected both of these double-sided seats that I've got within my model. I can then go to my contents and find uh, the clause that I want to link to them. Now, in this case, I actually do know what I should be linking to them. But when you, one of the benefits of using an object from the MBS National BIM Library is that if I go into the edit type and bring up the properties. Whenever you use an object from the National BIM Library, 
it comes pre-populated with manufacturer information in there. Okay, so it's got manufacturer information in there. It's got uh, unit class two information. It's got common arrangements of work sections information. But the key thing here is if you don't know what a product, uh, what product clause a product should go into, it will actually tell you. If you look under category, you can see here it's got the Uniclass 2015 code and it's got the Uniclass 2015 title of that product clause. And it's telling me it's linked seats. So now I know it's linked seats, I can have a look in my contents and there I've got my linked seats. So I can click on the linked seat and associate with the model. And you can see now I've got a blue tick next to it and a box next to those linked seats. Now you'll notice I've got another bench here that I also want to put into linked seats. So I can quickly click on that bench and I can go to my linked seats again. And because I can link one clause to multiple objects, this will work for me. So I'll just click on the three dots, associate with model, associate now. And I've now got all those linked seats, or those benches, I should say, linked in the linked seats clause. And if I go again back to my model report, you can now see I've got furniture, I've got mechanical equipment, and I can continue working down the specification. So I'm going to click into the furniture, and I've got my lockers here. So I'm going to sync to those lockers, in which case I have done. And again, I'm going to check, go back to my contents. Now I know that these, well actually, if I'm going to link them into my specification, I need to link them into the product clause lockers. But again, if, if you weren't sure, you can go into those properties because this is an MBS National BIM Library object. And I can scroll down and again, under category, it gives me the Uniclass 2015 code plus the title. So I'm aware of what I need to bring in. So again, I'm just going to associate this to my lockers and associate with the model. And I can continue working through associating the items. So again, I'll go back to my model report. I've got my windows. So I can expand my windows and I can see that I've got uh, windows single plane 910 by 910 and I've got an 1810 by 1210. So I'm going to sync to that 1810 by 1210. Go into my contents. And on this time, I can't see any windows there, so I'm just going to search again, and it brings up two external window systems for me. I'm going to select the second one, associate with the model. It's quite a quick process in doing this, and those of you who are used to using the plugin for MBS Create, this is a lot smoother and a quicker process than from using the Create plugin. Now. I've got another external window system there. And you can see I've got two windows here. And I'm just going to select one of these. Now these are the same family and same type. So let's see what happens when I only select one of those and I sync it with this external window system type A in my spec. And associate that with the model. Associate now. It confirms that the association's done. If I check the window that I selected, go edit type, scroll down, you can see that it's brought the general information in there. And again, the, these windows are Revit based objects. And if I go and click on my second window and go edit type and scroll down, you can see it's brought in uh, the UI, U, unique identifiers it's brought in the title, the code, and the suffix for it. So, because those are the same family and same type, I can just select one of them, and when I associate it, it will also associate the other window. Again, 
you can now look see if the associated list is building up with the amount of items that are associated and the unassociated list is starting to reduce. Now, I've got a couple of other things in there that I could associate and I'm going to leave them for a second because I want to talk about walls. Okay, so when I click on the wall here, you can see that I've got a basic wall, but the walls have material layers within them. Okay, so this wall within Revit is built up of a clay, a brick, breeze block, it's built up of insulation. So if I come to do the sink and sink to that wall so it selects the whole wall, it then shows me my material layers. So I've got brick common, fiberglass bat, concrete masonry units, low density, and plaster. Those material layers are as per Revit, and that information is being brought into chorus. I've now got the option <clears throat> to either associate the whole wall or just associate the materials, or I can do both. So the way we can do that is once the wall is selected, all I need to do is go back to my contents. First of all, I can scroll down my list and you can see I've actually got a masonry wall leaf system here. So I can click on the three dots, associate with model, and it gives me then the option to associate this at the object level or the material level. <coughs> In this case, because it's the system, I'm going to associate it at the object level. And I'm just going to go associate now. It tells me that's been associated. And if I scroll up, you can see there's the masonry wall leaf system with its little blue cube. I can now associate the material layers. So first of all, I can come to, for example, I've got my clay bricks. I can click on those. The wall's still selected, so I haven't had to go back in and select it. I can go associate with the model. And now I can select the material layer. So brick common is going to be what I want to associate the clay bricks to. I click on that and associate. I scroll to the top, my clay bricks are associated. Uh, I'm going to next select the insulation. So I've got expanded polystyrene EPS board here. I can click associate with the model. And I'm going to put that in the fiberglass bat and associate. I've then got my aggregate concrete blocks. So I'm going to select those and associate with the model. And those are going to come in at the concrete masonry units low density. And then finally, I've got some gypsum plasterboards that I'm going to use on the inside of a wall. So I can click and associate those with the model at the plaster level. And associate. So I've now associated the whole wall the external leaf system and I've associated the material layers to the uh, insulation, to the clay bricks, to the breeze block and to the gypsum board partition. So again if I go back to my model report I can see I've just got two things there left to be associated, the mechanical equipment and the plumbing fixtures. With mechanical equipment it's just quickly sync to those and it's these two towel rails. I'm going to go to my contents and I know that those are, are counted as radiators. Those again are MBS National BIM Library objects so if you wanted to double check you could go into the edit type. I'm going to come down to my radiators and I'm just going to quickly associate those. Back into my model report, I've got plumbing fixtures left and I've got a wash base some pedestal here. So I'll sync to those into my contents and I'm just going to scroll down and I've got a pedestal wash basin there. And I can associate that with the model as well. So it's really quite a quick process to work your way through the model. And we can use this model report to check if we've got anything left to associate. And in this case, everything has been associated with the model. Okay. And I've just checked the associated and it shows that everything has been associated. If I click open the walls, I can see the material layers are there. 
Now, once I've done that association, one of the nice things that you can start to do is you can start to use the model to actually navigate the specification. So for example, I've got my doors here in the model. If I click on them, watch what happens within the chorus panel. You can see within the chorus panel, it's opened the door set system up. So now that's opened up, I can actually start to edit this door set system. So in the description here, I could type, for example, uh, for for external wall. I could park my performance clauses. Um, I could park system manufacturer because I don't want to bring it in. And then I could start to fill the rest of it. So the door set, I could bring in the type here. I could say I want to use um, a, a composite door set. I can start to look at fasteners. And I can say, well, actually, we want to use carbon steel masonry brackets. And alongside this, I can also be looking at the guidance. So I can click on the guidance and it's giving me the guidance about the door set system. Now this is where actually being able to drag this panel out and put it on a second screen is beneficial. So if you've got two screens, you can then have your Revit model on one and you've got the chorus panel on the second screen and it gives you the full view. So if I start just to quickly expand this out, just to give you an idea of the difference, you can see you can have the guidance alongside it if you've got it on the second panel. Let me scroll that back again. And let me go back into my door set system. And I can continue working my way, editing. I can save and it will download those clauses that I've added. And if I scroll down, you can then see that those clauses are there. It's a great way of being able to uh, use the model to help you write the specification and navigate your way through the spec. Now, there are several other ways that you can work here. Um, you can start with a model and the basis of your specification, link them together, and then use the model to help you navigate the specification to put the information into the spec. You could start with a complete spec and a completed model and just link them together. You could have a completed spec and use the spec to help you make an informed design decisions on the model. And the other way around, you can start with a spec and use the spec to help you bring in different clauses and systems into your specification from the model and then start to fill that information in. So it gives a lot of flexibility in the way that you can work with the Chorus uh, plugin. And also because when you're completing the spec, if you just write the specification, if you get a version of Revit, which is just the reader version of Revit, and somebody's already done the linkage for you, you can still use the plugin and you can still use the actual model just to navigate around the spec and to help you start to edit the specification. You can't do the linkage though if you're using the reader only version of Revit. Okay, it's quite a quick process when you've got a simple model. But remember, this model report I'm sure will be of great assistance when you've got a complex model with a lot more information in it. Next, let's have a look at how we can then start to use that linkage to actually annotate the model, start bringing information into the model. So at this point, I am just going to hide this side chorus side panel for a second. So I'm going to go into MBS, click on show and just hide that side panel. Just move my model slightly for myself. Well, first things first, to be able to use annotations, you need to bring in the annotations into the actual into Revit. When you download the Revit plugin, 
it brings the annotation mod uh, and it brings the annotations with it and saves them onto your computer. In order for us to be able to find those, we click on support into about and at the bottom of the about here it's got a little link called tags and if I click on that it will take me on my drive to where those tags are stored so I don't have to go searching through the um, explorer. First thing to remember is the first tags you see here are MBS create tags. You need to click on the MBS chorus folder and once you've clicked on that folder it shows you all the tags that are available but all we are interested in is this address line. So we click in, select it all, and then we can just go Control C to copy it. And now that we've copied that, we can then go to Annotate on the Revit. In Revit, click on Annotate. And on the right hand side, we've got an option here multi category tag. If we select that, it tells us there's no multi category tag families loaded. So let's just click yes, we want to load one. Brings up the file browser. I go down to file name and I can paste that link that I copied. So it saves me having to go through this file structure to try and find it. Press enter and it takes me back to all those annotations. Now at this point you need to be careful. We've got three uh, sets of tags, or oh, we've got several sets of tags in there. We've got Uniclass 2015, we've got Omniclass for Canada, and we've got Cores. And what we're looking for, because this is Uniclass 2015, is we want to bring in the Uniclass 2015 uh, multi category tags first of all. So we select that, and go open. And as soon as we've gone open, we can then start moving our mouse around the screen to objects within the model and it enables us to start tagging the items bringing in the Uniclass 2015 title and the Uniclass 2015 code you can see I've got my linked seats there A pedestal wash basin. And I can select my wall here, and there's my masonry wall leaf system showing. Now you're probably all thinking, that's great, Nick, but what about the uh, material layers within the wall? Well, we can also label those or annotate those. I can go back to my annotate and select a material tag. Again, I need to link the material tags. Now, what I will say to you is if you use a template that's pre set up for you, these tags can be pre linked to that template so you don't have to go through this process each time. In this case, I'm just going to quickly go back in. I don't have to put the address in this time because it remembers where I was. And I'm going to set, select the material tags and just go open. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I can now start tagging the material layers within my model. So now I could get concrete blocks. And finally, a bit of a tough one, but There's my gypsum plasterboard. You can see it's quite a bit busy on there. But I've got the material layers tagged and I've also got uh, the multi category tags as well. Now, some of you might be wondering, that's all well and good, Nick, but what happens if somebody changes something in the model? Or if somebody changes something within the specification? 
how do we keep all this information up to date? Well, let's say that somebody comes in and removes this double door and just deletes it out of the model. And somebody comes into this pedestal wash basin, we click on the pedestal wash basin, and in the specification, they go in, sorry, in the uh, Revit model, they go into the edit type, into the general section. And they give it a prefix. Of WB101. Okay, you can see it's got that prefix in there, WB101. And let's say they also then go into the specification. So let's go back to the to chorus. Let's show it again bring that in and I go into my contents and actually I go into uh, my external window system I've go into the external window system and edit Go into my external window system and I go and edit and bring in a prefix. And give this it's a suffix, for example, uh, we'll call this type B. save so we've made several changes there between the specification between the model the specification changes could have been made within a normal web browser at this point the model and the spec don't match each other and it could be quite difficult just trying to navigate between the two of them to find out where the changes are. So what we've got within that model report that we used earlier to find what wasn't linked in the specification, we've got an issues report. If I click into the issues report, currently it's showing me that there's only one issue. We know that there are other issues. Whenever you go into this issues report, what you have to remember to do is click on scan model. Because the changes that have occurred within model, the spec won't know about, or plugin won't know about until you actually scan it. So if we click scan model, you can now see that we've got three issues. And the first one is highlighting the fact that we've got this door that was removed. So I click open, expand on the errors. It tells me I've got a door set system in my spec, but the object is that I link to is missing from the model. Got a couple of choices here. I could bring in a new door and relink that door object to the back to the door set system, or I could choose to remove the door set system from the spec. In the meantime, I'm just going to unlink the clause. I've then got two warnings. The first warning is that the parameters don't match between the external window system in my specification and the window SQL pane. 1810 by 1210 in my model. And I can look at that and I can see that uh, within my model, the 1810 window, if I just move this a little bit, is showing up with no type after it, but in and, and no prefix. But in the actual specification, I've got a prefix and I've got the type as a suffix there as well. But also, 
it's told me the parameters between my pedestal wash basin don't match either. So we have a pedal, I'm showing just a pedal wash basin, no prefix, no suffix in my spec. I can actually sync to the item in the model, so I can just quickly sync to that item, and I can see there that actually it's got a prefix of WB101. So let's repair these two items. Let me go back to my model report, my issues. I'm going to expand, and first of all, I'm going to fix the external window system. So let me scroll into that external window system here. I'm going to click, I've got And alongside that, I'm going to repair the pedestal wash basin. So I'm going to click on Fix All and watch what happens in the model. Now, the external window system's now got a prefix and a suffix. But hang on, the pedestal wash basin, its prefix is gone. Now the reason the pedestal wash basin prefix is gone was we had edited that within the actual object properties. Okay, The actual specification will take priority over the model. So any updates that happen to prefix or suffix within the actual specification will be applied to the model. If you make a change like we did with the pedestal wash basin, where we change the prefix within the actual object, when we go to fix it, it will replace that prefix so it represents what is in the specification. So if you're going to make any changes to the prefix, suffix, or even change the name of the uh, Uniclass 2015 title, do it all in the specification and then fix it. And then that will apply that all to the model for you. Okay, I'm just going to bring down the size of this side panel, just show you a couple of other things of benefit that you get with the linkage. And one of those items is, for example, if we have a sheet, and I'll click into this sheet here, for example, you can see that I've got the uh, model on the sheet and if I zoom in you can see it brings through all the annotations for you so those are all visible we can also have schedules of quantities for example and I've got an example of the schedules of quantities here I'm just going to this multi-category schedule it also then shows the Uniclass 2015 code the Uniclass 2015 title the suffix and the prefix, along with the family and type. Obviously, you can choose what fields here to display. But the secondary benefit with all of this is if I make a change within the model, so let's say, sorry, a change within the specification, so let's click into my contents, and let's go down to our linked seats. Click into my linked seats. Let's say I'm going to give this a prefix, or sorry, I say suffix, and I'm going to call this type A. Save that change, go back into my model report, where I've got an issue, and it's telling me there's an issue with both sets of link seats that are in there. At this point, I can choose to fix that. And if you look at the link seats that are appearing here within the schedule, there's no suffix there, but as soon as I click fix all, the suffix appears. Now it hasn't just appeared within the schedule. If I go into my sheet, zoom in, you can see it's updated it there. And if I go back to my original model, it's updated it there. So it's updating it across the, the model, the sheet, and 
the multi-category schedule from information that I've updated within the specification. So it helps you keep the information up to date across the whole of your project. Okay, that's Uniclass 2015. I wanted to show you the differences between Uniclass 2015 linkage and um, common arrangements of work sections. So we're going to open up very quickly. I'm going to open up the same uh, project uh, but for common arrangements of work sections. So here we are, as if by complete magic, with a, another version of our boot room. And we're now back within our Gainsborough House project looking at our two specifications. And I'm going to link this time this core specification to this model. So it's just a matter of me clicking on the three dots, associating with the model, same as it was with Uniclass 2015. That's now been associated to the model. And I can click into the specification, and you can see this time that we've got common arrangements of work sections selected. I'll just expand this out a little bit more so we've got a little bit more room here. Again, add content, got my model option here, and when I did the sync, it scanned it in exactly the same way. So I've got exactly the same families, exactly the same types. My first action is to sync to an object, so I'm going to sync to this external double flush. And in doing that, it will select that door for me. I can then go into the contents, and my contents and my spec here, I'm looking at a door, so I'm wanting doors, shutters and hatches, L20. I can click on the three dots and just go associate with the model. Now this is where it's a little bit different, because uh, cores uses work sections and the clauses within the work sections. You've got a choice here. I can either choose to associate it to the section, doors, shutters and hatches, or I can associate it into a particular clause. Now in this case, I'm going to associate it to a section. and I'll click on the doors, shutters and hatches and associate. Okay, so that's now associated. We can see the blue square as previously with Uniclass 2015. If I now go into the edit type to have a look at the properties, you can see that the general properties have come through. And this time the general properties have come through with cause code and cause title. If it had prefixes and suffix in there, it would have brought those through as well. And again, I can then go back to the model report. It shows that that one door has been associated. If I go back to one associated and select my other door choose to sync, go to my contents, I can again select doors, shutters and hatches because remember same as with uh, Uniclass 2015 I can associate a clause to multiple objects. So I'm going to go in but this time instead of associating at the set at the work section level I'm going to associate down at the clause level. I'm going to go into my product clauses here and actually I'm going to associate this to 270 wood doors. I'll associate now. It tells me it's been associated and again if I go into the edit type and have a look at the general section, this time it hasn't just put the L20 code in there, it's put L20270 so it's put the clause number in as well. And I can continue my way through the model selecting different items. Now a little bit of a difference is the walls, so let me go into the walls here. We still have those material layers, so let me sync to the wall. And you can now see I've got exactly the same brick common, fiberglass back, concrete masonry units, low density, plaster. I'm going to go into my contents, but this time I'm going to go into brick and block walling. And I'm going to associate with the model for the brick and block walling. And first of all, it is asking me do I want to associate the wall or the in particular material? So in this case, I'm going to say the basic wall to start with. Next step. Now it's asking me about, the, within the specification, do I want to associate the section, F10, or do I want to associate clauses? Well, in this case, because it's the whole wall that I'm associating, I'm going to associate it to the section and associate. 
Now, because I've still got the wall selected, the same principles in Uniclass 2015, I can click on the three dots, go associate with model, but this time I can start doing the materials. So I can go for the brick common. Next step, I can then, instead of choosing the whole section, I can then go, start to go into my clauses. So I'm going to go in types of wall here. And I've got clay facing brickwork. And I can associate that. I can associate again. And this time I'm going to go for the concrete masonry units. And I'm going to associate those. Again to my types of walling. And I'm just going to associate those two. Uh, concrete common brickwork and I could continue my way through that associating the insulation and associating the plaster to the relevant work sections within the actual specification. Now I'm not going to go through that whole process it's other than the fact that now you can associate the clause or the work section it's pretty much the same process and when I come to do the annotations, now I've preset the annotations up this time, so I've already uh, linked them. I can go into my annotations, I can go into the multi-category, and I can start to attach the multi-category. Difference being is this time it brings through F10, brick and block walling, L20 doors, shutters and hatches. I can then go back up to my annotations and I can bring in my material tags and I can start, if I just zoom in a little bit here and move across, I can start putting the material tags in. And then that will associate the clauses at material ends. So I've got F10, clause 110, and I've got F10, clause 345. The issues report will work exactly the same way as it does with Uniclass 2015. So any changes that are made within the specification around the um, cause title, the type of a prefix, um, if they're made within the specification, that issues report will then highlight those so that you can fix them within the specific, within the model as well. Okay, and that brings us to the end of our masterclass on the Revit integration with Chorus, the Chorus plugin. I hope that you found this morning's session useful. Before I let you go, just a couple of the things I want to make you aware of. Firstly, we've got the Construction Leaders Summit next week, which will be Wednesday the 21st and Thursday the 22nd. You can find more information about this on the mbs.com website. If you just go to Events, and at the top of the Events page, top left-hand corner, you'll see the Construction Leaders Summit Building for the Future. If you click on Register Now, it will show you a bit more information. Show you, uh, you can register for free here. You can see the speakers, view the agenda, and also see the key topics. Very much worthwhile registering for, um, with some quite interesting uh, conversations going within that session. Also, we have started a podcast. If you go into the resources section of the MBS website and click on podcasts, Paul Swaddle has started this podcast and he's talking to inspirational leaders within the construction industry. First two have gone out already with John Arnott and Miranda Shop. Listen to them both myself, very interesting, very entertaining. Um, you can listen to these on your favourite podcast player of choice, or you can come to this page and you can get the latest episode through this page. Again, Thank you very much for attending today's session. 
Um, you are a if you want to see any other events or rewatch any of the masterclass and webinars that we've done, head across to the events page. If you have any questions, contact your account manager. And if you're new to MBS, get in touch using the details uh, below. Our phone number is 0345 456 9594. Email address is info at thenbs.com and our website is thenbs.com. Thank you for your time today and all please all do take care. Bye-bye.